Okay, so this story time I'm excited to bring to you guys is called I Married a PP Bro. She says that I can ask her anything. This is an interactive situation because she definitely watches my posts. So she starts off by giving me some background of her life. Okay, so here's her story. I had my son at 18, never wanted kids, never wanted more. His father was in his 20s, pretty successful for his age, and he took care of me. He always made sure I have everything I wanted and took care of his son too. We broke up because I was pretty sure he was cheating, didn't stick around to find out. He was being disrespectful, talking to women on the phone late at night, and I wanted none of that. Didn't matter that he took care of me. I went back home to my mom. I also left him with his son. He was the primary parent then, and although people judged me, I needed to do what was best for me at the time. Remember, she was 18. We always had an understanding that I'd take care of me, get to where I needed to be, and he would have no problem giving me my son, which I still um, saw regularly weekends and holidays. So she says, I found a really shitty job and went back to school, which my son's dad also helped with. I was introduced to online dating by a close friend of mine. She was telling me how much she was getting from these old weirdos online. LOL. Pretty sure I'll be judged harshly in the comments, but this is my truth. I started online dating, took some getting used to, but I became a pro at it. I was talking to multiple men who just wanted their ego stroked and they would send me money. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and I didn't even have to meet them. I quit my job, got my own place and car. My tuition was always paid. It might sound easy, but getting a guy to willingly hand over money and letting him think you, genu you genuinely like you was hard work, more than my full-time job. Okay, so she lets me know she's from a Caribbean country and she's not going to tell me which because she doesn't want that online. She says, after a couple of years of doing this, I met my husband. He was different, very pushy. He was 48 and I was 24. He was also a white man, which I was never into, but he was generous from the beginning. Didn't take much work for him to just start sending cash and giving gifts. I thought um, I thought this was ideal, um, but I continued. She says, not even two weeks after we started talking, he booked his flight to come see me, which was a red flag to me. So when he came, I avoided seeing him and he was there for three weeks. The last week of him begging, I gave in and met which was also his birthday. So I felt sorry for him. I was like, women have got to stop feeling sorry for these dudes. I'm saying, I'm glad you were able to get your money though. Okay, so she says, he showered me with gifts. We went to the gym, went out, and I actually started liking him. He also never pushed for relations. So I thought something was wrong with him there too. He came off really sad, but I couldn't put my finger on what. She couldn't put her finger on exactly what was wrong with him. This was the alarming part. We were out drinking one night and he asked if I would ever marry him. This is like four days after meeting me. I said yes, jokingly. And the next day he went and got a ring. I kid you not. I took it. I took it not even taking him seriously. He left a few days after. And after he left, this man took over all my bills. I didn't, I didn't even have to talk to multiple guys anymore, but that just became a habit over time. So it was hard to stop. He wanted us to get married right away because he wanted to bring me to his country, not the U.S., but another first world country. I honestly never wanted to leave my country. I liked my life. So what I knew about him was that he recently got divorced when we met. They had three kids, but he never wanted to talk about about it, which was strange, too. Lord. Yes, Lord. She says, there is so much. I think I'll leave it there for now. She says that, but she continues to talk to me. So let, let's continue. She said that this would sound so unreal. So she sent me proof. Our age is also there. OK, so then I said, OK, you got married in 2015. It's 2023. Are you married today? Or are you divorced? And I also asked if she ever loved him. She says, we're still married, but haven't seen him in four years. That's a whole different story. I was like, holy sh even. And then she's like, even more crazy. So I asked if she went back home. This is what she said. I stayed in his country and went and got kidnapped in mine. She said also, but that's a different story for another time. And I'm like, okay, I'll be patient. <laughs> Even though y'all, I do want to know the story. She's like, LOL, it's good. Okay, so she's answering the question if she ever loved him. She said, I tried to and probably thought I did at one point, but I don't think I ever really did. 
I tried being the good wife like I thought I was supposed to, even though it was never really something I ever wanted and it backfired. But we'll get to that eventually. So I'm like, are you Afro-Caribbean? She says, yes, I am. I said, I know that people are going to jump in the comments and have questions. So we'll continue this tomorrow or the next day or whatever. And she says, okay, we definitely can. I just wanted to give my story from the other side. And a lot of the times people think women who talk to these men are stupid and destitute. I was never that. I knew what I was doing and why. He threw my game off. So here she's answering if um, she went back home. She says, I travel a lot since I migrated. I used to go back all the time, even kept my house I rented over two years after I left because in my head, I wasn't really married and this wasn't really what I wanted. I haven't been back in a while though, but that has a lot to do with him. He got me arrested and I had to fight those charges, but that comes later too. Going now, talk later. And I'm like, toodles. And so after this point, I came over to my community post on YouTube and I started teasing this, um, I started teasing this story. I'm like, I got a, um, the wife of a PP bro to give me a story time. And I put that there. And so people started adding comments. Uh, he's like, he's looking for a nanny and a maid, sis, run. Uh, somebody says he's looking for free services, run, girl, run. Um, so people are imagining that she was going to be used. And then this woman took the time to go back to the comments. I'm like, please never go to the comments. She's trying to go to sleep. <laughs> But then she started talking to me again in the inbox, even though she was supposedly leaving. She was like, I took the time and looked on your post, LOL. And then she says, he definitely wasn't looking for a maid or a nanny. He actually did more housework than I did. He probably did 90% if I'm being honest. He was just broken in a different way than these weirdos online. We still talk regularly, but it all came down to a white man who thought his white skin would make him more favorable to a black woman. There's a lot. And then at the end of this, I was like, ma'am, get some sleep and do not check this video and the comments until tomorrow, because obviously it's a different time zone because she's in another country. So <laughs> sometimes getting in these comment sections can definitely be addicting. But here is part one of I was the wife of a PP bro. So go ahead and jump into the comments. She is an active reader of the comments. So she will answer the questions. Make sure to like, comment, and share.